Thank you very much. Just before we begin, I want to mention we're working very hard just came out a few moments long ago. on getting uh, a young group of people out of Peru. We've removed some, and the rest are uh, being removed with the cooperation of the Peruvian government. And we're also uh, dealing with Honduras on getting some people out that got caught up. And Looking to get Americans home. Very well, again, with the good. Honduran government's uh, work, and they're working with us, so I appreciate that. Uh, we have a couple of other locations that we'll report to you, and we were able to get a young woman released from a certain area who was being uh, horribly accosted, horribly treated, and uh, we spoke to General Milley. General Milley took care of it. We went in, and we got her out. And we'll, uh, re we'll report further on that one. But it's, uh, that was rough stuff. I want to thank General Milley. I want to thank all of the people that were, were involved and the people that went in to get her. There's a lot of things. I want to thank you very much. I, I haven't really heard that much as about it. As we continue to marshal every resource at America's disposal in the fight against the Chinese virus, we're profoundly grateful to our nation's state and local leaders, doctors, nurses, law enforcement, and first responders who are waging this battle on Thank the ground. You. It All is absolutely critical that Americans continue to follow the federal government's guidelines, so important about social distancing, non-essential travel, and hand washing. Defeating this unseen enemy requires the help and commitment of every single American. I want to it's an asymptomatic just say enemy. that uh, Senator Rand Paul, a friend of mine, he's been a great friend of mine. He's been always there when we needed him, when the country needed him. He was a doctor? And as you know, he just tested positive. Jose Diaz Balart spoke to him yesterday, tested positive. And uh, some people are uh, they're getting quite close to home. And it's a terrible thing that's going on. The hidden enemy. I call it the hidden enemy. The virus doesn't discriminate. And I, I think they'll all be fine. I hope they're going to be fine. But I just want to send our regards, and I think I can speak on behalf of our country, to those two great friends of mine. We're working urgently with Congress on legislation to support the millions of workers, small businesses, and industries who have been hit hard by the virus through no fault of their own. Our goal is to get relief to Americans as quickly as possible so that families can get by and small businesses can keep workers on the payroll. Taking away people's uh, ability to this earn. This will help our economy, and you will see our economy skyrocket once this is over. I think it's going to skyrocket. I agree. It's a, a pent-up demand. It's a built-up demand. Going to have the best uh, dang party ever. I guess you really have to say who knows, but We're I think it's going to party like it's 2020. A tremendous day when we win this war, and we will win the war. We want to win the war with, a, with as few, a, if you look at it, just deaths as possible. We want to we minimize want to have the impact. As few, uh, number of deaths as possible. Today, I'm announcing action to help New York, California, and Washington ensure that the National Guard can effectively respond to this crisis. The National Guard, these are tremendous people. They're fully on alert. We've signed what we had to sign, and uh, it's been activated. We're dealing also with other states. These states have been hit the hardest. Um, these don't Actually, bother pretty me. pretty much by far, you could say the Tanks hardest. Everybody can see that. Just look at the numbers. For kids. If and through FEMA, the federal government will be funding 100 percent of the cost of deploying National Guard units to carry out approved missions to stop the virus while those governors remain in command. So the governors locally are going to be uh, in command and uh, will be uh, Their point. following the them, and we hope they can do the job, and I think they will. I spoke with uh, a lot of folks all three of the up. governors today and just a little while ago, and they're very happy with what we're going to be doing because we'll be announcing some other things for those three states and some There's the times we've got to come together right now. Uh, where it's uh, all the hardest. Answer. Not this action will give them maximum flexibility to use the Guard against the virus without having to worry about costs or liability, and freeing up state resources to protect Suspen the health and safety of the people of in their state. Suspension of habeas corpus. 
The federal government has deployed hundreds of tons of supplies from our national stockpile to locations with the greatest need. In order to assist in those areas, I approve the State of New York's request for a major disaster declaration, something which uh, Governor Cuomo has been asking for and which I agree, and we had it uh, done in very rapid fashion. Deployed uh, a hospital ship we as well. We approved uh, this on Already Friday too. evening, and we are working very, very hard to uh, get all of these things uh, not only signed up, but completed and finished and in win. The request from the State of Washington for a major disaster declaration was approved uh, just a little while ago. Went through the process, and we moved it very quickly. The request from the State of California was just received, and we will have it approved very quickly. We'll be working. I told that to Gavin Newsom. Uh, and we are These are people's uh, lives. We're working on getting that done very quickly. People are scared, It'll be done Mr. Maybe President. Tonight. We've large, uh, we have large quantities of medical equipment and supplies on the way, based on all of this, to those states, including respirators, surgical masks and gowns, face shields, coveralls, and gloves, with large quantities already delivered to Washington and to New York. Got to get them to the In people on the ground. In addition to large quantities of supplies, I've also directed FEMA to supply the following, four large federal medical stations with 1,000 beds for New York, eight large federal medical stations with 2,000 beds for California, and three large federal medical stations and four small federal medical stations with 1,000 beds for the state of Washington. The governors know. We're using medical the triage. The supplies en route to California and New York will be delivered within the next 48 hours. In addition, the Naval Hospital ship, the USNS Mercy. It's an incredible ship. These two ships are incredible. One of the West Coast, one of the East Coast. Will be deployed gallons to Los of Angeles salt water an hour. They had emergency something. surge medical capacity. And they Those ships capacity. ain't no joke. They are really something. Uh, I will say that uh, if you look at some of well, the we things we've been doing, and now those numbers have gone up. And just to be a little bit more exacting, uh, we've done a presidential approval for request for major disaster declaration for the state of New York. Uh, approval of Title 32 National Guard activation for the state of New York. We're providing all of this at no cost to the governor. I spoke with Governor Cuomo. Tread He's working lightly. hard. We're all working hard together. The relationship has really been amazing. But it also enables the governor to provide robust National Guard support to the state. And uh, the 25 percent, we're going to be waiving that 25 percent cost. Uh, we're picking up. We'll be coordinating, and they'll be doing something with very special people. Mission assignment of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to provide support to build out alternate care sites. They're doing various alternate care sites, which have now been designated by New York. Okay. Four unused, large unused federal buildings. medical stations of 1,000 beds. Turn the power on and use it. Um, no, I've heard that. Complex places, actually, with great equipment and uh, great people. Strategic national stockpile order, and this is as of a number of days ago, so far delivered to New York, and this is the 19th. We had the N95 respirators, 186,416 delivered. We've delivered 444,078 surgical masks. Many have been delivered since then. Face shields, we've delivered 84,560 face shields. Surgical gowns, surgical gowns, 68,944 to New York. Coveralls, 352. Gloves, 245,486. Also right. uh, to New York in what terms say, of uh, what's been delivered. And masks? Uh, just and about since 50 then, the numbers the box, are that's about, quite uh, large. And we have tremendous boxes. numbers of companies also making well, 4, equipment. Boxes. That, that's a lot of uh, boxes. For the state of Washington, Is enough? we've Is delivered 369,000 N95 respirators, 507,406 surgical masks. And this is as of um, about three days ago. Uh, 
face shields, 63,788 face shields. We've a little over one. Surgical gowns, 107,850. Gloves, 240,376. Okay. And we okay. have uh, many, many things pending. Uh, it's actually boxes. not pending. It's being, they're being fabricated. They're being made. And uh, they're moving. Now, for Washington, so we have four small federal medical stations, 250 beds. Don't tell what we can for, do. Uh, Washington, state of Washington, we have three large federal medical stations, 750 beds. And then you have, as I said, the approval of the Title 32 National Guard. State of California, again, to be very precise, we're going to have the approval of the Title 32 National Guard activation. Guard is we're activated. providing uh, all of this again, uh, like in New York, at no cost to the governor, meaning to Governor well, Newsom and the state. It's federal no emergency. The state. It enables the governor to provide robust National Guard support to the state. So uh, they're going to have control of, of the National Guard. Federal government sending. These are incredible people that are being sent. We have eight large federal medical stations with over 2,000 beds, and that's going to California. And then strategic national stockpile order. Uh, we've ordered, likewise, uh, hundreds of thousands of different items. I uh, won't go into the exact numbers, but the numbers are very substantial. But we're having uh, a tremendous additional number sent. Uh, and whatever the states can get, they should be getting. I say we're sort of a backup for the states. And uh, some of the states are doing really well, and some don't do as well. The ones that don't do as well need more help. But these are three states that really do need help mm. because they are, uh, they are breaks. hit Dense very population. hard. And the outpouring from the private sector has also been extraordinary. I'm pleased to report that Honeywell, great company, has just announced it will immediately expand its personal protective equipment manufacturing operations in Rhode Island to produce millions PPE of additional means. N95 masks. They're very hard to masks, get. Masks, stuff, personal protection. They're actually quite complex. Important. For the U.S. government strategic national stockpile, they'll be immediately then delivered to the various states. This expansion is already underway, and it's going to provide a lot of jobs for well, that state, probably around logistics. 500. The masks will be distributed by the government for the use of the health, safety, and emergency. And this for response workers, primarily for response workers. These are very high end. This expansion is in addition to Honeywell's action to more than double production of its existing personal protective equipment manufacturing plants. We can retool stuff very things, quickly. And they're doubling and tripling their production. We can crank stuff out. The clock. Today, I'm also announcing the launch of a new public-private consortium organized by the White House, the Department of Energy, and IBM to unleash the power of American supercomputing resources to fight the Chinese virus. The following leaders from private industries, academia, and government will be contributing. And uh, they're going to be contributing a lot of different things, but computer, primarily computing resources to help researchers discover new treatments and vaccines. They'll be working along with uh, NIH and all of the people that are working on this. Uh, but tremendous help from IBM, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, MIT, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. We're, we're, we're living in history right Energies, now, so. National Labor Laboratories, the National Science Foundation, and NASA. They're all contributing to this effort. And it's time for folks fully to step up. Show this us what you got. I also want to update you on the steps we're taking to protect and serve our country's 18 million veterans. These are great people. Our amazing veterans have shown their eternal loyalty to our nation, and this is the time where they're in need, and we are going to show our loyalty to them. We're being very protective of our veterans. We're working on certain uh, hospitals where we may be doing some work we got, we uh, in Louisiana learn from each in particular other. and some other states, veterans hospitals. Uh, we're going to be very protective of our veterans. Some of them are of that very vulnerable age, and some of them obviously are not feeling well. And uh, some of them are still suffering the wounds of war from many years ago. Yesterday, I signed vital legislation to ensure that the GI Bill will cover distance learning during this emergency. I also spoke with many of our veteran service organizations or the 
VSOs to describe our unprecedented action. In February, the Department of Veterans Affairs established 19 emergency operation centers throughout the country. Uh, one of the things that they've been trying to get done for many years, you all know this from following me over the last number of years, but we got it done pretty quickly. They've been trying to get it done for many, many decades was choice, veterans' choice, and also veterans' accountability. Uh, now, if it's, if it's crowded within this, if they can't get to a doctor, we have great doctors in the VA. I have to say that. We have fantastic doctors, as good as they come. But it's hard to get to them uh, because of uh, what was bureaucracy, but no longer well, bureaucracy. We've done a lot of things is in that thing. case because of accountability when people aren't doing their jobs, or if they're bad, or if they're sadistic, or if they steal, or anything bad happens. We're now allowed to fire them for — I signed that a year and a half ago. For many years, you weren't able to do that. So the VA is working, and I was abuse. just told by our Sounds great like uh, leader at the VA, Robert, Robert Wilkie, uh, he said, for the first time, we get the highest marks in the history, high, highest poll numbers in the history of the Veterans Administration. Came out a week ago that uh, they're, they're happy. And, and look, one of the reasons uh, that happened, highest in history, uh, one of the reasons that happened is because of Veterans Choice. If they have to wait online, they go and see a private doctor, and we pay the bill. And, uh, and they get better. They don't have to wait two weeks and three weeks or two days, but they get better. And uh, a lot of times they waited so long that they would, they would have a problem and it would end up being terminal because they couldn't get the kind of treatment that they deserve. They deserve. So uh, highest poll numbers, highest approval numbers in the history of the VA. I was just given that information yesterday. We restricted visitors' access to 135 veteran community living centers, which house nearly 8,000 veterans with chronic medical conditions, so that we limit their exposure to the virus. We want to totally take care of our veterans, and uh, that's what we're doing. The VA has canceled most elective medical and surgical procedures. They're delaying them till uh, after this is gone. After we've won, we began providing life-saving care to patients who had symptoms across the 171 VA medical centers nationwide. That's a big deal. Under my administration, the VA has also been a leader in expanding telehealth. Telehealth is becoming a bigger and bigger factor in, uh, in medicine. This month, we have taken bold action to cut through the red tape and make telehealth available for millions more Americans during this crisis. They can speak to a doctor from the safety of their home rather than risk becoming infected or making a tremendously long trip. We've digitized when, a lot frankly, of this stuff over the years. you'll speak to a great years. doctor right from your we home. We have the technology. It's happening, telehealth. We're very much at the forefront of that, too. We're very proud of it. And it also takes a big burden off our system. We continue to accelerate the development of safe and effective sick vaccines. People all in the same area. We're also aggressively investigating a number of antiviral therapies and treatments to determine their potential in reducing the severity and duration of the symptoms. And you know how I feel because how I feel is on Tuesday they're going to be starting it on Tuesday morning, and uh, we're going to have uh, some medications delivered that. We're going to see if they work. They certainly are effective in other ways, and uh, they they are safe from the standpoint Talking is that they're not, they're not killing people. We're not going to have that. So uh, a lot of great things have been happening. People, people that need regard. to know. Uh, I just want to finish, and then we're going to ask a couple of people to say a few words. We're also been not so sure large-scale use for so of many this people. incredible job that we've all There is given. red tape, but very often there's reasons but why I, it's I there. I want to say that I know that this is a challenging time for all Americans. We're enduring a great national trial, and we test. will prove that we can meet the moment. I want to assure the American people that we're doing everything we can each day to confront and ultimately defeat this horrible, invisible enemy. We're at war. It's a plague. In a true sense, we're at war, and we're fighting an invisible enemy. Think of that. For those of you who are feeling alone and isolated, I want you to know that we are all joined together as one people. 
eternally linked by our shared national spirit. We love our country, a spirit of courage and love and patriotism. No American is alone as long as we are united, and we are united. We're very united. People united are saying things now that divided, three weeks we ago, fall. they didn't talk that way. We're very united. No force is equal to the strength of a uni really a unified America, united America, an America like we have it right now. We'll For those together. worried and afraid, please know as long as I am your president, you can feel confident that you have a leader who will always fight for you, and I will not stop until we win. This will be a great victory. This is going to be a victory. And it's going to be a victory that, in my opinion, will happen much sooner than uh, originally expected. It's now attacking. The enemy is attacking 144 countries at this moment. 144, that's unthinkable. It's never been anything like this. And it's vicious. It is vicious. Some people recover well, and some people have a hard time. We all know that. But we will be totally victorious. We will then get our economy up to a level that it was, and I, in my opinion, beyond, because that will be a pent-up demand. There is a pent-up demand. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of great things will happen. But I'm very proud of our country. I'm very proud. I'm very proud to be your president. And uh, it's just something that's just — you're very special people. So thank you very, very much. And I'm going to ask, if I might, uh, a combination of Pete. Why don't you start off? Okay, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, just a little bit about what we're doing uh, in Washington, California, right. and New York. Uh, we understand that the you states of Washington, New York, and California are the areas seeing a steady increase in COVID-19 virus uh, cases. In order to assist with additional needs identified in those areas, FEMA? the state of New York was approved for a major disaster. It's wearing a FEMA. declaration this morning. Uh, Washington State was also approved earlier today. California submitted their request, and the President will consider it immediately. We have medical supplies en route to these states, including respirators, surgical masks, gowns, face shield, coveralls, gloves, with quantities already delivered uh, to both Washington, New York, and California. Th this all escalated very quickly. And we anticipate quickly. additional supplies uh, to be delivered uh, within the next 42 hours to all these states. Under President Trump's unprecedented national emergency declaration on March 13, FEMA is assisting state, local, tribal, and territorial governments, including reimbursing eligible emergency protective measures taken at the direction or guidance of public health officials in response to this emergency. Got to make sure All they have what states, they need. The District of Columbia, five territories, and two tribes are working directly with FEMA under the Nationwide Emergency Declaration for COVID-19. With the assistance of the FEMA regional administrators who are throughout the country, we are working to address the needs of state and local officials everywhere. States, tribal, and territorial governments do not need to request separate emergency declarations to receive FEMA so assistance under this one. nationwide okay. declaration. Having to do multiple the emergency declaration does not authorize direct financial assistance available to individuals such as disaster unemployment assistance or other needs assistance at this, this time. The thing. There might be things available. But Just a note on the know. USNS Mercy. Uh, well, based on analysis ship. of the potential needs for hospital beds on the West Coast, the decision was made that the USNS hospital ship Mercy would have the greatest impact in California. The Department of Defense has been given direction to dispatch it to Los Angeles immediately. The UD has advised that the Mercy can get into position within a uh, week or less uh, of today's order. Uh, even well, though there are more Panama cases Canal. right now in Washington, the projected needs for beds in California is five times more, of, 50 million uh, more people. than that of Washington. The Mercy will be used to take pressure off local hospitals, right. other medical needs, and not for treating COVID-19 cases. Exactly. Don't want it on a ship. And finally, a little bit so about the National with, Guard. It's literally a floating hospital. So the federal government continues to take aggressive action people who and may have the virus to address with the COVID-19 an threat as we Make sure you have the proper attack PPE. the health and safety or protect the, the health and safety of the American people. It remains our top priority. Okay. The National Guard is especially posted and equipped to assist federal, state, local agencies while serving the public. In response to this unprecedented Nationwide operation, Medical President Trump hospitals. has approved uh, Washington, California, and New York uh, National Guard units under Title 32, excuse me, Title 32 status for the COVID-19 response. 
the President's action provide the nation's governors continued command of their National Guard forces, enabling states to use additional resources to meet the missions necessary in the COVID-19 response. The National Guard is a viable and responsive avenue to provide a much-needed asset is. that is state-managed and federally supported. And I want to be clear, this Title 32 activation does not federalize National Guard members. The National Guard is still under the authority of each governor. They will work in concert with the Department of Defense. And we've had a lot of disinformation circling, and I want to make sure it is understood that this is not state -managed, martial law. Federally supported. The Department of Defense, by way of a mission assignment, will lead this task. Let's, let's hope we and don't finally, get there. Finally, uh, we continue to respond to hundreds of requests from governors uh, across the country and filling all their critical needs. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Peter, very That's much. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening. So we'll we'll stop with that for now. Um, I'll put the little link in the dooley doo below so uh, you all can check it out. But uh, yeah, so the president has uh, has granted uh, at least one or more, and he's highly considering another state of uh, basically disaster that should open up additional federal funding and everything for the different states. He's saying now they ha actually have a stockpile that is actually in process of getting to these states and the actual medical professionals, emergency personnel on the ground, PPE, which is prop, uh, personal protective equipment, basically things to minimize your exposure, contact with the virus, whether it's a respirator, something you're wearing just as like an N95 mask, uh, gloves and stuff like that, just stuff that you can actually recycle. I've heard some folks talk about potentially washing and everything. We go delve into a whole nother thing down there as well. Uh, but my big thing is this this is serious, or at least we're taking it seriously because this is serious. The thing is, anything you were worrying about before, the thing is, I go to the supermarket, I still see food on the shelves. There's no toilet paper. Why? Because people are freaking out because they see everyone else buying toilet paper. Guess what? Have, have we ever been short of toilet paper? How many more people are here now? Here's the thing. Go in there, buy some, maybe get more than you would before if you're not seeing it. Don't buy the entire thing. I mean, hey, hashtag capitalism. If you want to be shilling rolls of toilet paper for 20 bucks a roll, you can do that. We will remember. But here's the thing we got to carry on try to be smart try to keep around six feet or more away from other people and stuff try not to touch your face wash your hands a bunch more there's no hand sanitizer there still seems to be soap there find some water wash your hands warm water feels good try to do it for about 20 seconds or so but that's all I got for this one guys hey thank you all for watching Take care, be safe, peace out everybody, and long live the elbow bump.